Okay, so uh, good morning, Thursday morning, uh, heading into, I guess, a long weekend, whatever, whatever that means to anybody, but themes of family and Valentine's Day, and I was just sort of reflecting on uh, where we were this time last year. Glad we didn't have a, a crystal ball, but um, uh, just having this practice this morning as a way to, to warm up and to start by giving some attention, which is really, that's the Valentine's Day for, for the self, love, listening, giving attention to another. And this morning in our practice, just really having a little extra intention towards that for, for the self, for the body, for the mind. And this is a restorative yoga class. Today, um, it's always good to have a lot of uh, pillows and things. I've, I'm in my living room today. Usually I'm on my front porch, but it's a little too chilly out there. So I've got a, an assortment of things and you don't have to have all of this, but I have a sort of a firmer bolster that I like to sit on. I have a big pillow that's just off, um, off one of my couches and another smaller pillow. And if it's too much to grab all these things, then we'll make do. But it, just for the style of class where a lot of postures are supportive, those can be helpful. Um, you can use a sock um, if you need a sort of a strap or to make the arms longer or, or a scarf, something uh, along those lines. And most of the class, we're gonna be down on the ground for sure. This is not a working class, but just with all of the, um, the cold and contraction and um, sitting, sitting, types of things that we're doing. I thought we'd just start actually standing just to do a little bit of a, a jiggle out warm up. So my name's Kathy, for those of you that uh, may not have done a class with me before. I do have a singing bowl that I'm just experimenting with. I, I'm going to, to give it a little ding. And I, you may hear that a few times during class when we're changing postures. It'll just kind of be a, a bit of a wake up call if you've fallen a, asleep or fallen into a particular uh, storyline. And so uh, I see Dee is here. Great, welcome, and Lisa and uh, everybody. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna be starting standing and I'll just give it a, a ding. Just allowing your attention to come into the room, come into the body. Your eyes could be opened or closed. And I guess we could call this standing at attention. Just easy standing, just feeling what it's like to be on your feet in this position and nothing needs to be corrected. This is not about finding some sort of military posture. It's just about having some upright, the weight of gravity, it's our starting point to leave some things behind, kind of sliding off the shoulders, down the back body, and maybe noticing that we might be leaning into some anticipation or already some sort of agenda for later in the day or even for the next few minutes. And with a soft exhale, opening the mouth and just letting that kind of slide off the, the chest, the shoulders, any sort of weight of carrying any baggage from the past, any regrets. Standing, knowing that we're standing, knowing that we're beginning this practice in a community and this group of other beings that are all wanting to be happy, safe, and having a little bit more ease with all of the, the thinking, 
that's going on and that's going to be here that we have little control over. Noticing as you stand here that there are things happening, things like breath, Noticing your own breath without needing to deepen or change any of that. And other things that come across your awareness as well. The field of hearing. Some of the sounds that are traveling through your space. Or even outside your walls that the sense of hearing is picking up sounds. Just come back to feeling the entire body standing, especially letting your attention drop into the, the feet, the soles of the feet. Let's just pick up the toes and spread the toes. And you can look down towards your feet so that you connect with feeling the feet really stretching out between the toes and feeling the arches wake up and then make a fist with the feet, sort of like you're trying to pick up a pencil just do that a couple of times. So spread the toes, take a breath in. And then as you exhale, try to pick up a pencil underneath the toes on both feet. See what that feels like. Some work in the legs. One more time, spread the toes, breathing in and then make a fist or pick up the pencil sensation. And then relax that a little bit. Just feel whatever you feel in your body of things starting to wake up a little bit. I'm just going to start to do some gentle shaking, even more just like a vibration. So just uh, very loose. The knees are soft. Things are bouncing and shaking a little bit. Let's keep the awareness in the feet. Your heels might lift up a little bit. And as you start by feeling the sensations in the feet and waking up all of those sensory receptors that connect with the digestive organs and with the whole cardiovascular system. You might start to feel some more movement in the body, the fingers, the shoulders, the jaw. Oh, let your mouth be slack. You might want to open your eyes if they're, if they're closed just so that you don't fall over and feeling some perhaps heat build up. Let's do a few more bounces like that. Little shakes, breathing in through the nose and blowing it out through the mouth. Oh, you can make some sounds. Ah, shaking the shoulders down, shaking the thoughts down, everything down and into the feet. So we're really embodied energy and then slowing that down. Just let it come to a, a still point and maybe there's still some subtle movements or vibrations. Just taking that in your life energy, or the life force, the prana. Let's have the feet go a little wider apart and have loose fists and start to swing and start to incorporate some gentle rotations of the spine. So we're just Warming up a little bit, coming out of the contracted postures that keep us trying to be warm or from just sitting, the hip flexors. Let your fists wrap against your organs in the back body, the spleen and the kidneys. Let your head, neck and shoulders go with this. So I'm coming off of one foot a little bit, lifting one heel and then the other. There's really no right or wrong. Can let the arms move higher up the body now. So they're actually getting in more to the upper lungs. A gentle love tap on the front of the chest, the collarbones or the sternum area and in the upper back. So we stimulate these life uh, giving organs, both sides of the lungs, front and back of the body and then slow that down. Let's just do a few more wraps in around the chest, the throat, the thyroid gland, just keeping soft in the knees. So very little work where the spine is supporting us. 
getting into the shoulders a little bit too. If you can reach back there into the neck. And then just shake out the, the fingers or play some music. Some guitar hands flick uh, the rain or the shower drops. Just do a, a quick squeeze and release a few times. A couple sh uh, shoulder circles, breathing in to come up. Exhale down and back. Bend the knees a little bit with that if it feels good. Up and down on the exhale. Inhale and exhale and change direction. Good, and come to stand again. Feel the body standing in a neutral position. Just notice if there's any difference in, in a feeling tone or a mood right now from when you started. Good, and let's do a couple of half sun salutations, reaching the arms up and looking up. And then folding over the legs, deep bend at the knees so the spine can just really drape and be launched into the chest. Take a breath in at the bottom. And let it go. Let's come up halfway, press the hands into the shins, draw the shoulders back from the ears and just feel some core strength, belly lifts, and then fold again on the exhale. Take another breath down there. Some weight into the heels and just curl yourself up slowly. Take as many breaths as you'd like. Take a long time to come up. So let the arms just hang, the head be heavy. The last thing to lift as you come up, roll the shoulders and then breathe in again. Take up some space, feel the tailbone drop. Inhaling and exhale the swan dive over the legs. Really just hinging from the hips and feeling out the hamstrings. Take another full breath cycle while you're down there, draining out the contents of the brain and then roll it up again, unraveling the spine, lots of breathing all the way up, your own pace. Let's do one more, inhale and exhale, kind of sticking the seat out there Letting the spine cascade like a waterfall. Let's stay at the bottom. Let's take hold of opposite elbows and just give the head a, a shake. A little bit more weight there. You can shift uh, the weight of your torso from side to side as well, or do a bit of swinging forward and back. I feel a lot in the hamstrings there. So keep the knees a little soft. One more breath. And then exhale, roll it up. Coming all the way back up. And just pause for a full breath cycle now. Bringing the awareness into the entire body. Standing, observing, allowing thoughts to pass through this open container. Without so much resistance. And then we'll come um, down and we're going to take a seat. So you can sit in a chair or you can sit uh, up on a, any sort of a booster. If you've got, uh, if you're coming in a little bit later, I have lots of different size pillows for the class today. If your shoulders are tight and you want to use a sock or a, a strap for a couple of things while we're sitting, it's going to keep going on some opening for the upper body. That's it for any, any standing today. So make sure that whatever seat that you're in is, is a comfortable one. If you'd rather be sitting on your, on your couch or a chair, something where you, your spine can, can feel at ease and the low back can have some wideness. And we'll take the right ear over to the right shoulder and stretch the left palm away and press out through the base of the palm. Just giving some attention. Theme of this class is, is along that compassion side, which incorporates just giving attention and 
noticing what's here and allowing it to be here, whether we like it or not. We don't have to like what it feels like. Start to take a look over top of the right shoulder. Your left hand the, can rest on your thigh or the fingers might come towards the floor or your cushion. Or you can take your left hand and rest it at your lower back with the palm facing away from you. A way of opening up the whole chest on the, on the left side. Still looking out over the right shoulder and then nod the chin down slightly looking more in the direction of the right thigh. You can do some small movements with your chin while it's down there. Just exploring really carefully, tenderly, the range of movement there in this side of the neck. And you might draw the chin towards the ceiling and stretch the eyes up as well. And then back down. If it helps to have a breath uh, rhythm to give the mind a break here, you could do some inhaling one direction and exhaling in the other direction. Or you can just keep your awareness and on the sensations and on the body sitting, the feeling of the weight of the sits bones. And then release the left arm, bring your uh, right ear to the right shoulder. Now, so line it up, so carefully with the head. We'll take the right hand alongside the left ear and press the that side of the head, the left side of the head into the hand a little bit. Let's take the right hand around behind the back of the skull now. Drop the chin a little more on a diagonal. So you're now looking down more centrally as you press the head back into the hand. Take a full breath in there. And exhale. Release the right hand again one more time. Bring the right ear to the right shoulder. Walk the right fingertips out now and reach the left arm up. And take it into a bit of a side stretch, but focus mostly on lift and length out through the left hip, out through the left fingers. You can rest the left hand behind the head if you like, but keep reaching that elbow up and pressing the head back into the hand. Breathing in the left side body. And then start to take the left elbow in the direction of the right knee. Exhale there. Open up the left elbow. Start to have the right ribs wrap around towards the ceiling. And then exhale, bring the left elbow in the direction of the right knee. So you can cat and curve, get that flexion to your spine. Inhale and open it up again. Exhale, one more time there. And then bring the left elbow up. Come up and take the right hand to the left elbow now and let your left hand come down a little bit more. Wrap the tricep inward as you sit tall here. Let's take three breaths into the sides, into the back, into the whole of the lungs. Doesn't have to be, I'll just count, but it, you don't have to be breathing in time with my count or anything. Just a way of sort of keeping time for one, two, and three. Reach the arms up and press the palms to the walls on either side, pressing out through the base of the palms. Hanging out here, feeling the sensations in the arms or the shoulders or the neck, maybe even the face. Lighting up and lengthening from the armpit out to the base of the palm, breath in, and then flip the fingers towards the floor. Curl the fingers in towards a little bit of a fist if you can. You can tuck the thumbs in first to the palm and then make the fist just as a way of stretching out the backs of the wrists for another breath. We're gonna bring the arms behind. So if your shoulders are super tight, then it might feel nice to take that sock or your scarf belt around behind the back 
and start to find a distance for your hands that feels comfortable from each other and move the strap a little bit away. As you do that, take the arch out of the low back and let the scapula move in towards each other. So contracting between the shoulder blades. And at the same time, that's just helping the, the front body to open the heart to, to lift, expand the sternum, to reach up towards the ceiling, take another breath. Exhaling there, pause just in a seat wherever you are just to feel the effects of these postures in your body. If you're sitting cross-legged, then change the cross of your legs, put the other foot in front. If you're sitting in a chair, then adjust however you like. Comfortable again. And let's come back to where we started, breathing in. Let's have the left ear come towards the left shoulder. And just start with that. Slide the right fingers off the thigh and press the palm away and towards the floor. Fingertips draw towards the ceiling. Take the tip of the nose, the chin over the left shoulder and pause there. Make some shapes with your mouth, your jaw, opening and closing or stretching your lips over towards the left shoulder as well. <sighs> the right hand can stay like that or fingertips to floor or your seat or wrap the, bend the right elbow a little bit and slide that arm behind your lower back with the palm facing back. As you breathe there, start to nod the chin down a little bit on the left side. So you're looking towards your, your left thigh or somewhere in that direction. And you can make little movements with your chin on this side. Just feeling into that, maybe this side is, a, is tighter or not. Maybe you're not sure. Experiment with lifting and lowering the chin. So you're kind of moving on that diagonal over towards the left. Looking up with the chin and maybe stretching the eyes as well. And then looking down and also looking beyond where your chin can go. Whether the eyes are open or closed. Let's do that one more time. Good, and then release the right hand back to wherever it is in your in your lap area, let the left ear start to line up with the left shoulder again and bring the left hand alongside the right ear, pressing a little bit of resistance from head into hand just to help each other out there, all the body parts cooperating. And bring the hand around to the back of the skull, left hand around to the back of the skull, not the chin down so you're looking more down center line getting into all these different areas of the neck. Another breath there. Let's release the left hand, bring the left fingertips to the floor. Now line the left ear up with the left shoulder once more and reach the right arm straight up. Find that length and grounding through the right side of the seat. You start to incorporate a little more of a side stretch or just that feeling of length from the right sits bone all the way out through the right fingers. If it's available, the right hand can kind of dangle behind the head or support the back of the skull with the right elbow reaching up. Still just in that opening, opening along the right intercostal muscles, breathing in. As you breathe out, start to find a little bit of a navel draw as you take the right elbow in the direction of the left knee. You're not gonna get very far. Open up on the inhale. So the left ribs now wrap under, right elbow reaches to the sky and then exhale, find that flexion as you gaze towards the left knee. Open, breathing in and exhale to close that up. Let's lift up with the elbow 
And then let that draw up, bring us all the way up and take the left hand to the right elbow. Slide the right hand a little further down the back. Just nudge your chin down so you can get that and then look forward again. You're framing the back of the, framing the whole head. Taking a few breaths, just getting a little more space along the spine. This is really good for digestion to have this much, this much room sort of lifting the the weight of the lungs and the ribs off those digestive organs for one more breath there. And release, reach the arms up, inhale, bring the hands around behind the back one more time. If you can and you want to clasp the hands together, the elbows can stay bent and just squeeze, or you can use the strap again behind the back. If you're using the strap, then flip your hands the other way. So if you had your palms facing kind of up, then have them face down just to get that different feeling in the shoulders. And we'll take three breaths there. Just continuing to contract the shoulder blades as the front body opens. Once more, inhaling. And exhale. Good, release the, anything you're, you might be holding. You can do a few more circles or Shrug the shoulders, do a few of those, unlocking. And then let's come to the hands and knees. So I'm having some padding underneath my knees. And just taking a long table shape to do any sorts of movements that you'd like around now that we've been sitting for a little while. And you can have uh, blocks or you can have your fingertips up at the front or you can have a firm pillow if you want some more height, but just go in whatever, making some smile movements or drawing a smile with your tailbone, shifting through to a little more of a plank shape, focus on some figure eight loops of the shoulders. These are just ideas, so any sort of freestyle movement here. Oh, let's curl the toes under and just walk the hands back, flip the palms so they're facing towards yourself and they can be um, in more of a table. You can be in a table shape or if that could be a lot for the wrist. You can bring the hands in closer. I'd like to just try right beside my knees and give a few little movements there, shifting forward and back or circles side to side. Make sure you do have a little bend at the elbows. And if that is not feeling good, then you can have your, you'd be sitting back on your heels and just giving your palms a little press forward. And you might need to do one at a time. If your hands are on the floor, then start to peel back, peeling the thumbs, the fingers, and then bring them up and bring the backs of the hands together and give a little press there and swing out. And we're stretching out the bottoms of our feet as well. We'll circle out the wrists. Taking a couple more breaths just to with what you can tolerate. Another few flicks. And come back through center again. Bring the tops of the feet down now. And take it in towards a child's pose. So bring some weight back towards the heels and walk the hands forward again. So we keep that length through the front and sides of the body. Let's take five breaths there. Just allow the breath to fill the entire torso. Start to shift back to the hands and knees and bring the left foot forward. So we'll come into a low lunge. So definitely use uh, some height for your hands, blocks if you have them, or you can bring in a, a firmer pillow. 
and start to let yourself sit in a little bit. I've got some padding underneath my, my right knee, top of the right foot. If, if you're able to bring that to the ground and not get a cramp, then just pull the energetically, pull that um, foot forward a little bit. It won't move, but you'll, you'll feel that in the, the front hip flexor psoas on this side. If you need to turn the left toes out a little bit, if your hands are better on the inside of the foot, then you can do that. So it's sort of a dragon shape. If you've got some enough height underneath there and it would feel good to, to lower yourself down. So we're getting into this, this is a little bit deep. So this is a bit of yin. And we're just going to come back to breathing in this shape for about five full deep breaths. the sound of the bell starting to move yourself out of the shape just draw the hips back for a moment because that'll just feel good and draw the toes towards the face you can keep a bend in the knee and shift the hips from side to side here and then however you'd like to shift out of that shape to bring yourself back to hands and knees We'll take a puppy pose now. So we'll let the seat stay up high. Bring the thumbs towards each other and let the forearms come to the floor. Find that contraction, that feeling between the shoulder blades, not unlike what we did when we were sitting with our hands behind our back. So just feeling that this is really a similar shape. You can draw the, the belly in to keep the the pelvis in a more neutral position and wrap the upper arm bones towards each other for three, two, and one. Shift back up into that tabletop shape. And we'll take it over to the other side with the lunge. So if you're gonna use the blocks or pillow bolster, then have that at the front as you step the right foot up have enough padding underneath the left knee. If you have a pillow or something underneath the left knee, then you'll get even more uh, depth into this hip flexor psoas. You could turn the right toes out a little bit. So they're on a, a slight, uh, slight diagonal and that would, we'd call this the, the dragon pose. The top of the foot can be down, but if you get a cramp, then just keep the toes curled under. And once again, we're gonna hold this pose for about five deep breaths or just until you hear the second sound of the bell. Lots of time for things to come up. We're just allowing things to be as they are. Not about liking or disliking. This is what's here. Sensations, thoughts, sounds. Sound of the bell starts to take the hips back. And just coming out of that, draw the toes towards the face on that right leg and shift the hips a little side to side. Just let the head go if you felt some tension building in the neck there. And then go ahead and slide that back in. And from here, we're gonna take it on to uh, the tummy. 
So not too much padding underneath yourself. You might have a little bit. Just coming on down and bring your forehead on top of your palms. You can give the hips a little shake there. Wiggle them out. And then we'll just see how this goes. We'll bend the right knee and reach the, the right heel towards the seat. You can make a fist with your left hand so your forehead can rest on something. And then with your right arm, see if you can reach back. You might find the foot or not. Don't worry about it if you can't grab it. If you do have it, then, then just give it a, uh, a bit of a press, foot into hand or the ankle or wherever you might be holding on to that. You might need to come up a little bit onto your left forearm to give you more space to reach it and then come back down, but make sure you're not compromising the lower back. Let's take three breaths there. That's one, two, And three, releasing the leg if you have it. Allow it to float down, give your hips a shake again. Just feel if one leg feels longer or wants something different in one side of the body. And so we'll bend the left leg now and squeeze the heel towards the bum. So you could just be working on that or reach back with your left hand, support your forehead with your right fist or you might need to come up a little bit to get that into a, a forearm and then just come back down. So your front body can be nice and long and relaxed as you press that left thigh towards the floor and use the hand if you've got that to help. A little bit of contraction there, stretching the front quad, so hard to stretch. One more breath on this side. And then release that leg, bringing the palms again underneath the forehead. And then take your gaze over towards the right. You can let your head be down on your hands and extend out through the right toes. Keep your right elbow on the floor as you start to lift the right leg and swing it over towards the left a little bit. And I like to keep the legs straight and the toes pointed, but if you'd rather bend the knee, again, just being mindful of the back. There's a little bit of core muscles that are needed here. Inhale, bring that leg back to center. Exhale, switch your gaze so you're looking towards the left now. Extend and lengthen out of your hip flexor. Draw back through that left thigh. Start to open it up. So you start to shift onto your right hip and swing the left leg back. It might be just kind of straight back and long. Keep your left elbow nice and heavy, the weight of your head, keeping your, your forearms on the ground as you reach the left. Toes away from the left elbow. Take another breath there. Release and come back through center. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. Let's slide the hands back now and take it in towards a child's pose. With the knees right together, just try that. Sitting back towards the heels. You can bring in blocks or some support, something underneath the, the forehead or even underneath the, the belly, you might be sitting up taller. Another uh, option would be to have a blanket roll between your upper thighs and your calves. And if you need to, you can widen the knees and make some room for the belly.
Not staying too long here, we're going to do one more thing on our tummies. So take one more breath. And release. If you have a pillow, or you can use a blanket roll uh, to take a supported now, true restorative sphinx pose. So I'm taking my pillow and I'm just folding it in half. So this could be a blanket roll as well. Coming onto the tummy and, and just positioning the pillow so that it's underneath the, the floating ribs or the upper ribs. So the elbows can still come to the floor. So there's not so much work here. If you have other things uh, in your home studio, so uh, a block under the forehead, or you can walk the elbows out a little bit and have your thumbs come into your, between your eyebrows. It's a really nice way to just connect with that gland in the front of the brain, the, the seat of wisdom. Make sure that if it's too high, then bring yourself down a little lower. You'll, you'll feel uh, not happy in the lower back and those types of things we definitely want to adjust and modify for. And we'll spend about a minute here. So get comfy. And with this bell, just it's a, a, just a little bit of a wake up call to bring you back to present and something also to, to give the mind to do to just tune into the vibration just for as long as that holds the attention. Seeing if you can just relax. So just let things settle. The shape, the weight. And allow whatever is here just to be here. without any resistance or noticing that there is resistance or a wishing that things were different or some things were not happening. Noticing what is here breath, sound, thoughts, if there's any pain, then backing off modifying, lowering down, or coming out of poses. Good, so let's start to release from this one. Bring the hands by the sides, start to press yourself up and back. Instead of coming into child's pose, since we've been on our knees for quite a while, let's take it onto our seat and bring the legs forward in a long diamond shape. And you can roll up your mat or your blanket, or you can sit on that cushion. You can have other things here to support your pose. As you start to drape forward, you can use other pillows or anything that you might have to Rest your arms again so there's not so much holding that you have to do. Pillows underneath the thighs, 
So just making it your, your own. It's a way of all that time we spent in some heart opening postures at the beginning, seated at the, all that, all those shapes on the floor, just taking the counter pose to all of that. Some lightness with some humor. I'm just seeing the, the driftings of mental activity and starting over. Breath is here, sound is here. Let's take one more breath in the shape. Start to travel upwards. Removing anything that might be around, out of the way. So just to lean back and take the legs wide and drop the knees over to one side. And then back to center, go slow, lift one knee and then the other knee can follow and over to the second side. Inhaling to switch. And one more time each side. Good, so we're gonna do a uh, supported pigeon pose, yippee. And so if you've had enough of being on the knees and front body, then for, for you today, it'll be the figure four shape on the back. Pressing into the left foot or drawing the left thigh in towards the chest. However, um, you can try this with a pillow up towards the front of the mat, pillow or a bolster, and you can do it at the front of your mat and get into it the way I'm going to, or you can just tuck it underneath your right hip afterwards. So I'm gonna kind of climb over top of that bolster with my right shin. And then the, the bolster is supporting the hip. I've got my left leg long, but it could be bent. Could definitely be in a bent position, but I've got that height underneath my right hip. So it doesn't have to float in space. And then I'll walk the hands forward. Maybe you have other things, again, blocks or pillows that uh, can support the forehead. Adjusting, so it feels like something that is therapeutic for you, again, to stay for a minute in any of these variations. Opening up to breath, releasing some of the accumulations in the hip. Not so uh, focused on alignment or correctness. and not being in a shape that is right at your max for intensity. You're able to breathe with some ease, with some fullness, but it's still just a natural rhythm.
and shift just right over to one side, over to the side that's on more on the cushion. Uh, and bring uh, both legs forward, take the cushion out of the way and extend the legs and just give them some movement, get the circulation going again, flop the feet. Let's do the other side. So that was working for you to, to be on the front body, putting a bolster or some support there and climbing up over top of that with your left hip, your left shin. You can have the right knee quite bent out at the side. And take a little bow over that. Or you might be in the figure four on your back. Or you can be straightening out the right leg. Everybody's got different sort of props too. So it just depends on what height you have there. In some way to be able to relax, allow and observe. What is happening here? <laughs> Giving your full attention to this moment. Just this breath. this body. This hip. <laughs> Not getting too serious about any leading into future. Starting over. Just this breath. And starting to shift. If you're on your back, you can just give your legs a shake or a windshield wiper there. Otherwise, bringing your weight over to your left hip and coming back. We'll all meet on the back now and hug the knees in towards the chest and give a squeeze. Hands on tops of the knees to do a couple of circles there, easing in the low back. If you've got that pillow or block, have it over towards the right side, or you can tuck it between your knees. Let your knees start to come up and then over towards the right as your arms open up. Have enough support between the knees or pillows underneath the shins that you can keep the left shoulder nice and heavy and the left arm reaching away on a downward diagonal if the shoulders tight or just open to the side. We'll take five breaths. This one. Two. Three. Four. And five. Left knee lifts, right knee follows. Spring the feet down, keep the knees bent and bounce the hips a couple of times. Just reset those sacral bones before we go to the second side. Let's have the pillow or any props there, either over on the left or squeezing between the knees as you bend the knees towards the left elbow in that direction. And then adjusting from there, so if you're, you're serving yourself up, you're giving that attention to 
Just getting things really nice and cozy. Right arm, the position of the right arm, the right shoulder, so there's no effort. Maybe gazing over to that side for five breaths. Two more full breath cycles on this side. Noticing the pause at the top of the inhale. And at the bottom of the exhale, that empty space. Once more, inhale. And exhale. Bringing the right knee up. And then the left knee to follow. Hugging the knees in towards the chest one more time. And then if the spine feels neutral, you can come right into Shavasana there. You can bring some blankets in and extra pillows underneath your thighs, something for your head. If you feel like you want to take a few minutes with your legs up, then you can have a pillow or a block underneath your seat uh, just so that it's not so much work to float the legs up towards the ceiling or place them on a, on a chair or your couch. Any shape that is a full release surrender for a couple of minutes. Most important, important pose of this hour and a hard one, hard to, to stay with it. So you can acknowledge that. Soften the jaw, the eyes, any lines of concentration. I'll ring the, uh, the bell to start us into that rest and digest and again on the way out. May notice the leaning into the future as we slow it right down here, an anticipation of what's coming next or getting on with it. And that's okay. In a moment, you'll hear the sound of the bell. Bringing some circulation back to the fingers and toes. Of course, you can stay and continue if you have the time and ambition to rest longer. Otherwise, after a little bit of movement, take it over onto either side and pause. And just give yourself that hug of appreciation for showing up. Not taking that for granted a whole hour. Pressing into the top hand to lift back up and find a comfortable seat. So the spine can have space. The organs have a little more space. Notice uh, 
any mood or emotion or tone that comes along without judging any of that. Leave the palms in the lap or bring the thumbs to the heart centers. Take a moment to reorient. The eyes can open, reorient to your space and to the awareness of each other. All along for the ride, all wishing to be well, safe and happy. And may the events of the past hour in some way also ripple into the rest of our afternoon, weekend, or celebrations to in some way benefit the others in our bubbles as well and beyond. Namaste. Thanks, everyone. I'll just turn the recording off. If you'd like to unmute, you're welcome to say hi.